Hello, 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 and welcome to Laker Look Ahead Whiteout Edition. I'm Matthew Moran, the sports director of WTOP10, and I'm joined by my friends from the other media organizations here at SUNY Oswego, from WNYO, Sam Watkins and Jordan McGee, and from the Oswegonian, Brian Crossy. Guys, it's Whiteout. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, That's it all is. you got to say about this. Whiteout, Plattsburgh, Oswego. Of course, Whiteout weekend with the Potsdam game. They like to rope that in their homecoming uh, mm -hmm. a weekend as well. But really, it's the Plattsburgh-Oswego game that everyone loves. The crowd goes nuts for it. The whole entire Murano Campus Center Arena filled with white. You think about rivalries like places like Duke, North Carolina, Michigan State, uh, Michigan and Ohio State. When you first heard about this rivalry, what did you, what did you think? What did you think when you heard about Whiteout Weekend? Well, when I was a young whippersnapper in high school, coming here, my, uh, you know, going on the tours here at Oswego, they kept saying that this was a huge rivalry, and I wasn't really sure what it was all about until you know my freshman year when I covered the game for the first time, and it, it's as big a deal as ever. It, you know, for me personally, it reminds me of like why I love sports. You know, why I'm doing what I'm doing, why I want to go into a field in sports broadcasting is that sold out crowd, it's loud, it's rambunctious, anything goes between Oswego and Plattsburgh, uh, you know, so it's, it's just it reminds me of why I love covering sports, why is it that, you know, we do what we do, it's just a great reminder, it's a great thing to do every single year, and it's my third, you know, third whiteout now, so hopefully it's going to be even better. Well, uh, my first whiteout memory, going back to when I was, uh, a young kid, my dad went to Oswego, of course, so he'd be telling stories of his days. Of course, at the time, they were just stories to me. I didn't think anything more than just, you know, dad telling his college days. Then, of course, as uh, I got older, it became more clear that I was going to come to Oswego. It became a part of my life as well. It's just a very great feeling, though. You can't really get a full experience when you're hearing about it. You have to be in that Murano Campus Center Ice Arena or around the field house back in the day to fully understand and experience the great tradition that's been going on here as we go for decades. Uh, yeah, right along with that. I remember I was a senior in high school and I was applying. I, I, I was actually Oswego and Plattsburgh were my two schools. You and I remember. The right one. <laughs> you the right one. And I remember yeah. talking to. Uh, he was one of the sports directors at a local TV station. He said he went to Plattsburgh, and that's when he kind of really first introduced me to it. And like you, you do more research. Like Sam said, you learn about the tradition. You learn about when Steve Levy was here, and he was covering these games. And then uh, the guy, his name was Joe. He just started telling me about this. So obviously, I did choose Oswego. But like, it's the tradition with it. Like back at Romney, and now this is this is going to be the ninth installment of it, and the Murano Campus Center. So it's almost like a it's almost like a new tradition here at the Campus Center when it's officially now white out. And, you know, bringing in the homecoming weekend, that's a, that's a new thing as well. Um, but I guess, you know, I know we've talked about it, it's that atmosphere. And I can say my, so myself. I remember, Jordan, you know, working for WMYO freshman year. You were the videographer. I was one of the analysts. And I remember just, like, we saw the line wa lining up uh, uh, outside the, the radio station, outside of our, our booth, and then just walking over there and going into the doors and just the electrifying crowd that went nuts as the guys came onto the ice and we finished up our pregame. I think me and Matt Drexler looked at each other and were just like, wow, this is, this is incredible. Yeah. This is incredible. And going down on the ice and just seeing the, everyone. And it, it's not to say that, you know, other games throughout the season are uh, intense. You know, mm -hmm. Oswego fans, they, they come to play and they come to play hard. And, but when the whiteout game happens, it's on a different level. Mm -hmm. and it, like, explain to me, like, as some references of you know, examples, what makes it such a, such a different game and just a different atmosphere? It, it feels like you're in a whole different place. It feels like you're on a different planet than compared to like, mm -hmm. the games we see in any other sort of fashion. Like, yeah, that's right. I mean, obviously, <coughs> Murano Campus Center, there's still thousands of people there, even for like a regular game, mm -hmm. like a game against Canton or Fredonia. But like when it's a rivalry game and when it's home and when there's that expected tradition of it and when, you know, people will go to the game, they'll be wearing different colors. You'll see some green, you'll see some yellow. But when there's 3,000 people all wearing white and they're all in it for like the same cause to see as we go in, that's, that's what makes the difference is that it's, it's so much more of a connection, I think, for Whiteout. Well, it's all about the history. It's all about the tradition. There is no rivalry without precedence and things that came before it. If this was a new team, Plattsburgh, coming in here, it doesn't matter how good the games were. It doesn't matter if it was a 3-3 tie going into overtime. 
wouldn't have the same feel because of the history, because of carrying on the tradition that people come to Oswego, they know this is getting to expect. Mm -hmm. They know this is when you have to bring it. They expect this to be loud and they don't, they don't fail to live up to the expectations. It's not about any one person. It's about the student group as a whole that makes White out what it is. Because if you take away the fans there, there's nothing. Say you want to want about the players on the ice, but the Oswego students and the fans coming in here from outside Oswego, they make this game what it is. Yeah, speaking of the fans, my favorite part is just in that line, you see kids just ordering dominoes, <laughs> playing card games, they're, you're singing 99 beers, 99 bottles of beer on the wall. <laughs> it's a fun time. It's a fun time to be a student. You see that line going all the way back to Poucher and, you know, just waiting, you know, kids lining mm -hmm. up right at 3 o'clock, mm -hmm. waiting, you know, three, four hours in line just to get in and get some good seats. It's, it's a fun time. You, you look at that line and you say, wow, this is, you know, you don't, there's no other game where that happens. Yeah, well, students have to go through that twice. I mean, I, I remember last year as a freshman, I, I got there around 8 in the morning yeah. just to get the tickets. Exactly. Wasn't it great to be on the other side now, Brian? <laughs> <Not needing> a <laughs> ticket. I mean, it's good. And when I, you, you realize you don't have to go with a ticket and you can show up <laughs> a lot later than everyone else. But, I mean, they go through, the, they go through that twice. They, that Sunday where they're waiting in line all day for tickets and then, that Friday again where they're waiting in line just to get in, get some good seats. So. And that's the thing, you think about Oswego, let's face it, it it's not the biggest sports school. It, it's not a, a place where you're getting huge crowds for football games, you know. we, we have a football team. Of course, <laughs> of course, and that's the thing. And, and, you know, with the new turf stadium, we're seeing some crowds for men's soccer, of course, and field hockey, and, you know, we'll probably even see lacrosse. But overall, uh, across the board in, in most schools, even even basketball in, in, in Maxfield Gymnasium doesn't really get the big crowds. This school isn't really, when it comes to its support and its dedication, it, it doesn't really focus that much on athletics. And uh, at least, but I think you could make the point is when it comes to, you want to say the biggest campus event on this entire campus throughout the whole entire year, I don't think you can make it any other case in Whiteout. It brings no other event brings this many people together, students together for one event in one place at one time. I guess it's just the simple notion of you don't like Plattsburgh. You come here literally on those tours, they tell you we don't like Plattsburgh in any shape, way or form. And when this is the big sport, you know, obviously both programs are, you know, perennial division three powerhouses, both have, you know, pedigree, Sudiac championships, they all both have national championships to claim, you know, and it's just simple as that, is when you come here, whether you are a student, faculty member, or whatever, whatever it may be, you don't like Plattsburgh, you don't like Plattsburgh at all, and they make that very clear when you come here, is that you just don't like them for whatever reason, and it brings out a little bit of rivalry. You see, we saw last year too, you know, Plattsburgh bringing their bus full of students and the student sections were going back and forth <laughs> chanting at one another. I love that. I hope, I, I hope we get that bus of Plattsburgh students here again. It just creates great rivalry. The students feel like there's a cause that they, mm -hmm. you know, they feel like they can affect the game. They're right on top of the goaltender, whoever it may be, Rollo or Finney. They're going to be going after him all night long. It's, it's just a fun time, students going back and forth. They really feel like mm -hmm. that they have a cause in all of this, that they're, you know, they're cheering, their loud play really makes an impact on the game. Well, yeah, Jordan, you made a great point. You said both these teams are good, and that's what makes rivalries rivalries. When you talk about the best ones, is that both teams need to be on top of their game at all times. Emory, Gosick, two of the most, two of the most successful Division three coaches, and so that's what makes this, you see the coaching matchup. And then, like I said, ever since you go Ever since it started in the Ronald Campus Center, 06, 07, it's been either Oswego or Plattsburgh that's won every single SUNYAC championship. So it's the top two teams in the SUNYAC. Two, it's usually always a top 10 matchup, even in Division Three. So that's what makes it possibly the best rivalry in Division Three hockey. That's what just makes it so huge is because these teams are always good. And There's always something on the line every time these teams play. And that's the thing that, you know, you mentioned Emory and Gosick, and, you know, we got to talk to him, you, know, you guys talking mm -hmm. to Gosick, and, you know, we were able to get, you get a sound bite from Emory, and both of them were kind of making the point that they want to make it, it just like any other game. But it doesn't seem that way when they play against each other. And like you mentioned, Jordan, when you come to Oswego, you don't like the Cardinals, and I can guarantee you the same thing goes with the hockey team. They, they, you have sometimes players that play each other in juniors, but when Plattsburgh and Oswego, it just seems like the teams raise their level of play. And I think definitely, you know, we don't get to see the Cardinals at all, you know, except when they play Lakers. But I just feel for the Lakers side, I have not seen some better performances out of the Lakers 
that when they play the Cardinals, they just step up their game. When they played against the number one team in the country in 2013, that was one of the best games they played all year so far. And then we saw the same thing down the stretch, winning the SUNYAC championship, going through Plattsburgh twice mm -hmm. in 2014 in that SUNYAC tournament. And then 2015, I know getting the tie once again here uh, back in February, but it's just something that even though the coaches want to say it's just like any of your game, it just it, what happens on the ice, you can say all you want that when the puck gets dropped, you don't pay attention to the fans, but I really do feel that it makes an impact. It makes an impact, and it, it, it makes a big enough impact that the players know it, and it affects their game throughout the whole entire time. Well, mm -hmm. it's not just the Laker players. If you're a Plattsburgh Cardinal player coming in here, you know what that weekend means to Oswego. You have a chance to silence that crowd, and how much these guys love coming in here be able to silence this rowdy Oswego State crowd. Mm -hmm. This is a big game for the opponents in Plattsburgh as well, coming in here. And whether they're cheering them or booing them or not, players love playing these kinds of atmospheres, whether they're hostile or friendly. And the Cardinals can feed off this uh, energy as well. We're talking to Coach Digby today. He said he wasn't sure if the energy would positively or negatively affect the Lakers right now. And it all remains to be seen. That's the great part about this rivalry. They're always so close. These games are so neck and neck. They always elevate, the, elevate to each other's uh, level when they play these games, and you just don't know what's going to happen. The team may not be playing well right now. The Lakers not off to the best start. When it comes to way out weekend, you know it's going to be a close game, regardless of how the teams are playing coming into it. Absolutely. This can be seen as a turning point. I mean, we might even go on that further. Of is course. that not only is this Plattsburgh, but this is Pasta, and those are the two top teams in the SUNYAC right now. So you have to look at this as, yes, the Lakers have started off slow, 1-1-1. One, one, one. This isn't the expectation that they have every year. Um, so you want to say, listen, this is, if there's one weekend, maybe this is a good thing that it's in November this year, not February, because Lakers slow start. Maybe they can use this. Build some momentum and get in, when they get into the middle part of their schedule, knowing that they've, already, that they've already faced maybe the toughest part of their schedule. And for Plattsburgh, I think that one thing that Coach Emery was even saying, that, yeah, we're off to a 3 no star. We feel pretty good about ourselves. But honestly, we, they didn't feel that they were confident in the way they've played because of the teams they played. Buff State and in Fredonia and then Canton. I mean, Buff State and Fredonia, two teams that made the SUNYAC tournament, but uh, we'll see how that shakes out. Oswego might be the, the toughest team they play so far this season, and you never know. Oswego could uh, definitely upset the, uh, upset the Cardinals, and he, Emory even said, you can't overlook the Lakers. No, no way is a Plattsburgh State team going to overlook an Oswego State team. But I think we're going to wrap, we're going to go to break. We are going to come back and we're going to get into a little more things about the game, some interesting points, who's going to be in net for both teams, who knows what's going to happen with that. It's one of the things that's going to shake out with this big whiteout game, which is now just over an hour away from puck drop. We're going to keep you going from here, here on Laker Look Ahead.